Good morning. Today we celebrate the Feast of St. Elizabeth of Hungary, and the, uh, someone very kind asked for the Mass intention for, the, for today to be for my intention. So I would like to say my intention today is for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call all sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whose gift St. Elizabeth of Hungary recognized and revered Christ in the poor, grant through her intercession that we may serve with unfailing charity those in need and those afflicted. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, heard the Lord saying to me, to the angel of the church in Sardis, write this, the one who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars says this, I know your works, that you have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen what is left, which is going to die. For I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. Remember then how you accepted and heard, keep it and repent. If you are not watchful, I will come like a thief, and you will never know at what hour I will come upon you. However, you have a few people in Sardis who have not sold their garments. They will walk with me dressed in white because they are worthy. The victor will thus be dressed in white, and I will never erase his name from the book of life, but will acknowledge his name in the presence of my Father and of his angels. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church in Laodicea, write this, the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the source of God's creation says this, I know your works. I know that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either cold or hot. So, because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich and affluent and have no need of anything, and yet do not realize that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich and white garments to put on so that your shameful nakedness may not be exposed and buy ointment to smear on your eyes so that you may see. Those whom I love are reprove and chastise. Be earnest therefore and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, then I will enter his house and dine with him, and he with me. I will give the victor the right to sit with me on my throne, as I myself first won the victory, and sit with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will sit, I will seat the victor beside me on my throne. I will, I will seat, seat the victor, the victor beside, beside me on, me on my throne. throne. He who walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue. I will, I will seat, seat the, the victor, victor beside, beside me on my throne. throne. 
Who harms not his fellow man, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the Lord. I will, will seat the, the victor beside, beside me on my throne. throne. Who lends not his money at usury, and accepts no bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be disturbed. I will, I will seat, seat the, the victor beside, beside me on my throne. throne. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. But he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor, and if I have extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. So in this whole story today, this account of Jesus in the city of Jericho, there is really one th true thing that's happening. If you think about it, up until this point, a son of Abraham, so that means he was Jewish, because at that point there weren't still no Christians and there still were no Muslims, so it was just the Jewish people. A son of Abraham who has become a tax collector, so an enemy of, this, of the people, and probably crooked because in his confession at the end he says, if I have extorted anything from anyone, I'll repay it four times over. Obviously he has, or he wouldn't even say that. So he was a kind of a crook and a tax collector and probably not practicing his faith. That's, that is true. And then there were all these other people, and it doesn't identify who they are, does it? It just says, when they saw this, they began to grumble. But they're the ones who are standing in judgment of him, the ones who probably wish they could have the joy that Zacchaeus experiences when he receives the call from Jesus. Now, he does go out of his way to see who Jesus is. He hears he's coming. He climbs a tree. When you, have you ever been to Jericho? The tour buses take you right to the tree, where they say right to the tree where, where Zacchaeus climbed up. It doesn't look like it's 2,000 years old, but it's one of those things that, you know, you see on tour buses. And so, but it's a big, it would, it would have been a very large tree. Sycamores, you know, they're, they're huge. There's one right out here in front of the office that's enormous. So little guy climbing up this tree, and then the Lord, of all the people that are present, and assume, assuming there were many because he couldn't see through the crowd, of all the people there, he is the one that Jesus chooses. And then he goes and stays at his house. So who now is poor and who is rich? I don't know if you've ever been to a, a large event, like when the Pope came to here to Washington, D.C. or something like that. There's all these people that are fighting to get to the front of the crowd because they want to greet him or, or somehow shake his hand. Or I guess they're probably not doing that anymore. But, but there's, there's, there's usually this crush. When I, was in the, when I was in college, I spent a semester in Rome, and we would go to these masses at, at St. Peter's, and you know, they didn't have, they don't have pews as such. They had chairs that they set up, 
And it's at one point when the Pope starts to come down the, the, the main aisle, all these chairs, they're just all knocked over and everybody rushes to the edge of the space where you're, where you're being seated. And I've, I've been there before and just like crushed against the barrier. You know, they put up those barriers. So if you can picture what this was looking like, everybody wanted to see Jesus. But Zacchaeus was the only one that he chose. Why? Because Jesus realized that he was very wealthy, but he was also very poor. And it was in this conversion, literally this conversion that takes place, where, where he, he stands before Jesus and says, I'm going to sell, I'm going to give half of everything I have away, and I'm going to change. This is the kind of thing that jo now suddenly Zacchaeus' joy is now given back to Jesus, right? Jesus, this is a joyful moment for Jesus because he realizes what's just happened. It's that attention to the poor that we remember today is St. Elizabeth of Hungary. She was famous for the work that she did with the poor around her, with the resources that she had. She was um, against, even against um, what her family wanted her to do. She would continually give things away. So it's important, I guess, today to, to pray in a special way for the poor, those who have both spiritually and physically uh, financially that we that we might be able to do something in our in our own way to bring them joy that their joy might be returned to God now let us stand for our prayers of the faithful We pray for our holy shepherds that they may be fervent in God's service, repenting of any tepidity, so that Jesus may enter in and eat with them and help their ministry. We pray to the Lord. For world leaders, that they may walk blamelessly and do justice, never harming their fellow men and honoring those who fear the Lord. We pray to the Lord. That Jesus may invite us down with Zacchaeus into the familiarity of intimacy with him forgiving us our sins and bringing salvation to our house. We pray to the Lord. For all who are lost and far from God, that Jesus who came to seek and save what was lost may hear our fervent prayers on their behalf. We pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead, that they may be among the victors who are dressed in white and who are acknowledged by Jesus before the Father and the angels in heaven. We pray to the Lord. And for all the intentions that we include in the silence of our hearts. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, in your love for us, we ask you to hear and answer these prayers according to your will and our good through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Let us pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of your people, and grant that we who celebrate your Son's work of boundless charity may, by the example of St. Elizabeth, be confirmed in love of you and of our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Having fed upon the delights of the sacrament of salvation, O Lord, we humbly implore your faithful love that imitating by your grace the charity of St. Elizabeth, we may also be partakers with her in glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace.